Hey toy collectors, welcome to another super exciting outrageous toy review. Today, we're talking about the Road to Joe Fest. I went to Joe Fest 2021 with my buddies Nick and Dave, both of who you've probably seen on this channel a few times. I had to be at Nick's house at 3 a.m. on Wednesday morning to get ready to go. I packed my clothes for the trip and money to spend, and I had my extra Masters of the Universe Classics, Castle Grayskull, because Dave wanted to buy that from me. So that was in the truck, and it was dark out, and I drove to Nick's, and we moved everything from my vehicle into his vehicle, and we got on the road heading towards Baltimore to pick up Dave. Dave ran Castle Grayskull inside real quick, threw his stuff in the vehicle, and we went to grab breakfast real quick, and then off we were headed down south. Went through Maryland into Virginia, and we got in some crazy traffic. Uh, there was like a backup at this one tunnel, and we sat for about 35 minutes trying to get to Bender's comic book store. Uh, Bender's was kind of an interesting visit. It's a it's kind of a stereotypical cluttered comic book store. There were a lot of comics, tons of comics, but also a lot of toys, um, a lot of shells to GI Joe vehicles. We did look at some figures. I picked up some comics. Nick got some Action Force posters. Dave picked up um, a 1982 clutch figure. I took a nice little chunk out of the pile of comics I still need to finish my Real American Hero run. I picked up issue 105. We got Roadblock teaming up with the October Guard on the front. We got issue 107 with Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow, Fugitives of the U.S. Government. Issue 120, which I swear I have this issue, but it wasn't checked off on my list in my wallet. So, I don't know, but at the mercy of the Red Ninjas, Destro and the Baroness are in trouble. We've got 121 to save the Silent Castle. Ninja Force, Storm Shadow, and Dojo on the front there. Is that Nunchuck? I don't know. Issue 124, Triple Threat. This is where Larry Hama decides to use all three of the gimmicks he's not super crazy about all in one shot and try and get them out of the way. We've got DEF, Eco Warriors, and Ninja Force. Issue 127, featuring the attack helicopters, the ripcord helicopters, Cobra Takes Manhattan. Issue 128, Looks like Lady J's pinned down with an injured hawk. This issue, the fact that the title is got battle damage and the, the box over here is broken is very unusual. Um, they, they generally don't like to mess with the titles. And I know the artists like to play with that concept, but generally the, the companies are against that. And issue 129 featuring the Battle Wagon. The final item I picked up at Bender's was this uncut armadillo file card, the driver to the Rolling Thunder. There was also a really cool bottle of foam soap featuring a recoil on it, but it was just a little out of my price range. I just couldn't spend what they were asking for on, on, on a novelty product, but that, that was uh, something I, I certainly considered getting. Uh, so, you know, we got some nice finds there. It's kind of an interesting shop. There was a cat, Melissa or Missy, that has been a... A running joke for this evening. Missy! 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 What are you doing with that fandangled camera? I told you you need to go to bed. After Bender's, we went uh, a little further. We went to Toy Meisters, which is a giant toy store in the second floor of an antique mall. They had a really nice selection of different toy lines. Uh, we obviously went straight to the G.I. Joe section, but we did check out most of the store. We were looking at Mo2 stuff and Star Wars and Ninja Turtles. I really liked that they had little vignettes set up, little displays with, like, uh, backdrops and things like that. That was pretty cool. In the G.I. Joe section, I looked at a Crusader spaceship. It was super white. Um, it had no stickers applied. It was really cool. It was mostly complete. Um, but there was a stress mark on the hinge on the black shuttle door. And I have a bad experience with Defiant shuttle doors, so I ended up passing on it. Also, the little Crusader shuttle the avenger shuttle that's inside the crusader was like wedged in there and i couldn't take it out to like look at it um so that seemed like another little project to it then i decided to pick up the mega marines of beast blaster apc and i asked the guy to take it out of the case so i could look at it and one of the back wheels was broken off 
And I was like, I, I don't understand stores that sell broken stuff. And, you know, Dave and Nick were looking at things, and we had to keep asking a guy to, like, get them there on shelves behind the case. And at that point, I was just kind of, like, disappointed. I, I hate pestering someone so I can just look at the price on things or look at the quality of things. And then when this thing in the display case that I would assume was in good shape was broken, I was just kind of turned off. So I did enjoy walking around there, and I would definitely go back. But I just kind of shut down a little bit and decided not to buy anything while I was there. Uh, Dave and Nick each got a few things. Nick got um, a weapons transport and a few other things. Dave got a Sky Patrol skydive figure. And at that point, we had to make a decision because we were not going to be able to make it to our third stop. We were going to get there right as they closed, basically. So we ended up staying overnight there so we could go to Galactic in the morning, which they opened at noon. That threw off our plan for the next day. We weren't going to be able to go to Full Circle Toys, even though we had really wanted to go there. That wraps up day one of the road trip to Joe Fest. Make sure you check back soon for part two.